everybody, this is Sean Jones, and thank you for tuning in to The Boarding Sessions. Today we have with us acclaimed singer, songwriter, author, and radio host, Florence Kay. Thank you so much for mm -hmm. doing this. Really appreciate you taking the time. How are My you? My pleasure. I'm doing great, thanks. Yes. I'm doing great. Very happy to be here with you today. So we got a lot to talk about. <laughs> now with these things, I always like to go way, 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 way back. Back to little Florence. Okay. okay. Not capital K, like the, the okay, little, yeah, yeah. little K. Yeah, little K. Okay. Um, you came from a family that was very musically inclined. Yes. Did you find that you just naturally gravitated toward music or did they have to push you into it? Like how did that, how, how was that growing up? It was interesting because I never wanted to become a musician or do music, oh. but music always dragged me back to her. I started playing piano when I was three. My mother was teaching a lot of, she's an opera singer, but she was giving a lot of piano lessons and bringing me on with her. Um, instead of hiring a babysitter, I was just there playing, drawing <laughs> beside the piano lesson. And at three, I just picked it up and I did 12 years of classical piano and uh, a bit of singing too. I thought I was gonna be an opera singer. And then I found that music was my life, but it was also painful. It was like getting into that bubble of creativity and. Mm. And music and being surrounded this, there was an, a, a zone in my brain that was also hurting right. with music and healing at the same time. So I was like, I want to get away from this as much as possible in my oh. life. Oh, Yeah. But then I got a gig as I was studying in university. I went to do communication degree and I got a gig at, at, as a pianist for a Polish restaurant in old Montreal. And I played there four years, five nights a week for five hours. <laughs> so it was the best possible job for a student but I was in music right and then I started getting more gigs and more gigs and then I got a record deal and then music that, became my life that was yeah it. I did a few years of my career then I was like okay I want to become a yoga teacher so I put my career aside for a year did my yoga teacher training taught for a couple months and then music brought me back again like I got a super cool gig I did it and then I was like okay this is the best thing ever I want to keep <laughs> doing this then I went back to university in psychology and then I wanted to just grow go there and do my master's and everything and then music Call me back, back and back again. I don't know. It's like it's it's you know those relationships that you always break up, break up, break up, break up. So, but it's okay. That's my that's gonna be my life, and it's fine. I love it. I love music as long as I'm like navigating through doing something I like. You know. Well, that's a uh, yeah. That's that's quite a journey that yeah, you have is. that you have been on. It's so weird, but it's that's how it is, and I try to fight it, and it's just not fightable. So I guess I gave in. I was you like, okay, you I did give in. You definitely gave yeah. in. And, and thank, thank you for giving in because you have given some amazing art <laughs> to all you. of us, honestly. Thanks. Uh, who were some of your Canadian musical influences growing up? Well, I'm a Montrealer, so Leonard Cohen is a big part mm -hmm. of our, mm -hmm. our musical scene. There's also, a, like, the Francophone scene here is very strong, the yes. music, the cultural. So a lot of artists from here were very present in my life when I was growing up. Of course, Celine Dion, and, and when I was a kid, she was just starting here, you know, she was yeah. doing only French music. And we were just watching this little girl from a town called Charlemagne just we grew up with her rising fame and looking at this and it was a very inspirational thing as well. I love uh, Daniel Bélanger, I love mm. uh, uh, Jean Leloup. Jean Leloup was like, that's all I was listening to. All, all music from here was so right. strong as well. And I want to touch on that actually because the, the, the Quebec music scene is very, very unique. Yeah, it is. You have stars here that unfortunately most of the rest of Canada have never ever heard of. Can you mm. speak a little bit on that and just oh, yeah, try it's... and explain that phenomenon? <laughs> well, we're the only Francophone community in North America. It was very important to f for us to keep our culture throughout the past centuries. I think it was always a fight to keep the language, the culture, the traditions, and the music also and the francophone population managed to do so because now today there is a whole world and because we're the only francophone place here we have our own magazines tv shows movies right. artists and what's fascinating is that quebec is about the same population as like long island but it's a whole star system as well oh yes it's fascinating and then you go to toronto you cross the border or you even go to the west island on the on montreal the more english part and it's two different worlds, it's like two different countries. But we also have so much to learn from each other. I don't know enough about the Canadian Anglophone scene as well. Right. And I wish I did. We right. only hear about the ones who make it first in the States. Absolutely, before. yes. But there's such a rich scene in English Canada as well. You 
have recorded music in French, English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Where does that <laughs> come from, and 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 how have you managed to infuse all of that into your music? Like a lot of people in Montreal learn English because it is a bilingual city, so it kind of happens automatically right. without us even thinking about it. We have the English classes at school, but we don't speak English because of those classes. Gotcha. <laughs> right. It's, um, then I became fascinated by. Um, Cuban music, when Buena Vista Social Club came out in mm -hmm. 1997 by yes. Ray Cooter. And I put the record on, and the first song Chan Chan played, and I went like, oh my God, what is this? This is the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. This is unbelievable. And I bought the record, and I listened to it over and over, and I still listen to it at least once a week now, right. the whole thing. And I was like, I gotta learn how to play a piano montuno. I gotta learn how to sing in Spanish. I gotta go to Cuba. I gotta like meet these guys. It's so beautiful. Absolutely. So Spanish was a big part of me wanting to understand that culture better. Right. And Portuguese comes from my love for Antonio Carlos Jobim, the king of bossa nova and all his amazing music that he wrote. I wanted to be able to sing it and understand it. I only took a year of Portuguese, so I can't really like, I can, fake it if I go there and mix it with Spanish, but at least I can understand the, the basic um, intention of a song right. and, and sing without having too much of a French accent. Because that music too is like, Vinicius de Moraes, Toquinho, Jobim, Elis Regina, Astro Gilberto, João Gilberto, these guys have made like, this is the most beautiful music in the world, apart from Sean Jones. Apart from Sean Jones. <laughs> We're going to switch gears a little bit. So I interview you now. Yeah, no, 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 no. Ah. Uh, not only are you an accomplished musician, but you're also an accomplished author as well. Mm -hmm. Is the, the mindset when you're writing a book and making an album, are they different? Is there any similarities that happen? It's completely different. Completely. It gives me a break from music to write my books and it gives me a break from my books to write music. Mm. It's two different zones in the brain, <laughs> but uh, I love writing like literature and it's, it's a passion that was born out of something um, difficult that happened to me seven years ago when I went through a major um, psychotic depression mm -hmm. and I was hospitalized on the psych ward for a few weeks and and I had to I struggled with mental illness like really badly and um, four years afterwards after my recovery and the treatment and the the meds adjustment and the therapy and everything I I decided to share my story because I was ready to and and I you know when I started getting sick my one of my biggest fears is that people would find out about it right. and now I can only see how much it helps when people talk about their own stories like especially in our world because there's a lot of, of mental illness everywhere in every environment and we need to demystify what it is so when yes. I wrote my book Buena Vida that was my first experience of writing a book and the thing is that I already had my story it was mm -hmm. my story and the words spilled like the, the feeling was still so fresh so when I wrote it it was a good exercise as a writer because you want to describe those feelings as precisely as possible to help demystifying what mental illness is. Mm -hmm. But it's the wording and it's about sharing everything. You can't just say one side of the story, the beautiful side of mental illness. You have to say everything Absolutely. if you want people to comprehend. Yes. So that was a very interesting experience and I love the experience of writing. So I kept writing afterwards. So as you know, Florence, yes. for the boarding sessions, I yes. was able to cover some iconic material. And I contacted you about doing a duet of a very iconic French song, Absolutely. Ne me quitte pas. Yes. Am I saying that properly? Ne me quitte pas. Ne me quitte pas. Yeah, see, your French classes I, are still there. It's great. I got this. It's not great. What, what, when was the first time that you actually heard that song? Do you remember? Because it's, I mean, th this song is huge for the French community? You know, I think there's not one moment that I first heard the song. I just remember this song. It was just there. It was just a part of my life <laughs> since forever. In everybody's life. It's the ultimate song of like desperation in a love story. Oh, yes. It is so beautiful, so touching. And Jacques Brel, the way he wrote it, the way he sings it, even musically, the way the story uh, unravels We've been there. I, 
I don't know if you have, but I've been there to that point in a relationship where you know it's it's impossible, but you still, you don't want the person. The person yeah. can't go because then what are you going to, like, it's impossible. You can't picture your life without yeah. that person. Yeah. And you're ready to step on your own dignity. You're ready to step on your own self-respect. And I don't recommend that, but it it does make it didn't make a great song. In the French version of the song, he even goes to say, I will be, I will be the shadow of your hand. I will become the shadow of your dog. Dog, I, well, that's, and, I, and that's why I wanted to ask you that as well, because I know there's an English translation and a French translation, and they're, they're a little bit different, sometimes a lot different, mm. but that one line, that lyric, <laughs> I will be the, sh I would have been the shadow of your dog. And he wrote that, dog. and he sang it. That's amazing. You have to be fully into that that emotion to like. I will be the shadow of your dog. And in English, the version is is it's hypothetic. The English version is hypothetic. If you go away, mm -hmm. this is what's going to happen. If you mm -hmm. go away, but if you stay, we'll ride on the sun. Whatever, yes. we'll ride on the rain. But in French, the person already has a foot out the door, and it's not if you go away. It's don't leave. Uh, please me. don't. Don't. Go. Not even please. Just <laughs> like you can't. Like she's. I don't know if anyone's ever going to be able to touch that, emote that, unless they're actually going through something yeah. similar, right? Like, it's it's unbelievable. But what one can do when covering a song is, I think the trick is not trying to emulate exactly the same Absolutely. feeling, but bring it into, take the, 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 the propos, the, the point of the song, and and turn it into your own mm -hmm. your own interpretation of that feeling and the same with the music so when i first heard the arrangement of namakitapa that we're going to sing on um which went full like 6 8 r&b mm -hmm. type of thing i was like this is brilliant you're singing it like you had written it not like you're trying to sing what he had written right. i love your singing my love oh thank you WestJet advocates the message, love where you're going. What does that mean to you? I think it's about commitment to where you're going. If you feel strongly about something that you'd like to do or somewhere you'd like to be or within yourself or somewhere else, and you're committing to going there, it could take two days, five years, 15 years. Just love where you're going. Because if you love where you're going, you'll commit to it. Mm -hmm. Um, I also think that's when you step into another culture, another world, you will see how people live differently, how people might struggle differently or what, what, what drives a culture. And even though sometimes you're out of your comfort zone, if you love it, you'll want to get into that and bring those experiences mm -hmm. back home and make mm -hmm. them a part of your life. Yep. And that, that's wonderful. That's a wonderful thing. Traveling is, is good. It's a good education, and it's a good way to, to learn more about humans. Florence, I want to say thank you so very much for taking the time to speak to us. I want to say thank you so much for doing the duet. Yeah, that was fun. Singing on the song with me. Thank you, thank you, Such thank a you. cool version. Thanks to you, really. And that's it, folks. Thank you so very, very much for tuning in. This has been the WestJet Boarding Sessions. My name is Sean Jones, and wherever you are headed, take care, and we'll see you again soon.